What is up, everybody, and how's it going? I'm Alex Goldstick, and you are listening to the Spring Forward Podcast. Today on Spring Forward, we've got an inspirational interview with wide receiver Joe Anderson and won't take much time getting there. By the time this episode comes out, we'll be one day away from the first doubleheader of this year's Spring League in Austin. Tickets are still available at thespringleague.com, as well as the link in the description of this episode. We'll get to more details at the end of the pod, but for now, let's hear from Joe. Joe Anderson is a wide receiver for Team West in the Spring League. He's a native Texan who played his college ball at Texas Southern and was a member of the Chicago Bears active roster for parts of two seasons. He's also spent time in the NFL with the Eagles and Jets in his professional career. Anderson, however, might be best known for a nationally covered story that went viral and ultimately worked, but we'll get to that in a minute. For now, let's welcome Joe Anderson on the Spring Forward. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? So you're actually the first Texan to be featured on the pod, which somehow seems like an oversight on my part, given that we're in Austin and that's where the Spring League's going down. Um, does this feel local to you, or is Texarkana far enough away that Austin doesn't feel like home? Well, I wouldn't say it don't feel like home because you know I live in Houston, so we're about two hours down the road. So, uh, but I'm, I'm still in Texas, so I ain't too far away. And give us a geography lesson on on where Texarkana's at and Texarkana, where you grew up. Texarkana, hey man, it's in the woods in the heart of nowhere, basically. Because you, if you say it to somebody, they'd be like, they be like, where Texas County? And I'll be like, man, Texarkana, it's the country. Uh, so, um, <clears throat> it's a population of about thirty five thousand people. But I'm I'm from Redwater. I just went to school in Texas, County, which is 15 more miles up the road. Where I'm from is Redwater, Texas. Um, population about a thousand and nineteen people, literally in the woods, one stoplight. Um, just a country guy. Um, I got an opportunity to go play at a powerhouse football school at Texas High. Um, took advantage of that and began to further my career with football um, off the collegiate level with the NFL. Yeah, I mean, I hope I'm not embarrassing myself, but uh, the high school is called Texas High School. It just sounds like a power high yeah, school, Texas right? High. Um, it so, is. so out of high school, you initially went to Louisiana tech, mm-hmm. um, but ended up playing three years at Texas Southern, which is in Houston. Yeah. Um, what was behind your initial decision out of high school to go to law tech and then your, your transfer back to the state of Texas? Man, honestly, man, um, uh, just opportunity. Um, you know, me, like, unlike uh, a lot of kids, uh, <clears throat> decisions. Um, I was a little problem child. I always been a good kid. Um, but I did a lot of little stuff wrong. Uh, whether it's tardies, being late for school, and all that stuff adds up uh, to absences. Now you're in detention for it. Um, and then th- those little small things begin to kind of steer uh, teams away. Um, my high school quarterback was Ryan Mallett. Um, he's at uh, still in the league. He's at the Ravens right now. Actually, we, him and I talked today. Um, you know, I was just in a great position. Um, but a lot of things I kind of you know took from myself. Um, I have remember like it was yesterday when the uh, uh, – uh, what's it with the Wolverines? Michigan, Michigan, because he he went there first, and I was supposed to go there too. And they came to recruit me, and I'm in D Hall. I'm in detention because I had too many tardies. Well, I'm in ISS for it because they piled up. Uh, cool kid, you know, doing a lot of small stuff wrong. Uh, so they came to D Hall and uh, ISS, to, and they seen me. And they were like, uh, my receiver coach, Coach Rat, was like, hey, they said if they come back again, in your trouble again. They're kind of going to turn turn their backs. And I freaking got in trouble again, and he was serious. And they, they kind of kicked me off the table. But Oklahoma State um, offered me a scholarship, and I went on an uh, official visit. And they were supposed to sign me while I was there. Um, after the game, they didn't. And, you know, it's just been a journey, man, you know. Um, and then all, uh, Louisiana Tech gave me an opportunity. I took it and ran with it. Um, from where I'm from, you'll take anything. You know, we don't have much in Texarkana. And to make it out, you're a hero. You know, you got a lot of robbing, killing. We're like number three murders capital in the world, uh, city. And it's like to make it out, you're, you're a hero, man. So I wouldn't say that, you know, what made you choose Louisiana Tech? It's just it was an opportunity, and I took it, man, because I wanted to be something, you know. So then you, you end up playing the majority of your college career at, at, uh, at Texas Southern. It's yeah. an HBCU, FBS school in Houston. Yeah. Um, and now you're in Houston full-time, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so take us through your, your your college ball. Well, man, Texas Southern, you know, I transferred. I didn't take care of my, my business as a, as a kid. Um, but a lot of matureness kicked in once I transferred. Uh, you know, got a lot a lot of humbleness to be, be you know, uh, impact my life. Just It was just a humbling uh, transition. 
um, to go from having a lot as far as college-wise, you know, gloves, things being handed to you a little bit more. Like, I never had a silver spoon or anything like that. But as far as, like, equipment, things just being there to where you go to a university that really ain't got much, you know, and now you're decreasing. Like, you literally got to work for everything, which I did anyway. But it's just, like, to be in that situation to where you're going to a losing program and it's the, the opportunity is going to really be slim to none to try to make it to the NFL, it was just humbling, you know. It just really – character built a lot of character you know adversity you know i faced it you know i looked it right in the face um i got there again took advantage of the opportunity um i was one of the guys one of the best uh athletes on the team um which a lot of people don't know i wasn't even on full scholarship you know nobody would never knew that if i wouldn't have told them um but you know i just wore that type of stuff on my sleeve while i'm at practice you know while i'm in the game that's why i played the way i played because it seems like sometimes i get the shorter end of the stick for no reason um i didn't have a meal plan um, you know, having to beg the, the lady at the lunch line to, you know, let me, you know, come in and eat sometime. Um, I took my jug, having to take my jug to, to, to the lunch, having to take my jug to the lunch, to the cafeteria, just to fill it up so I can have something to drink at home. Um, because, you know, I didn't have money like that in, in school. So I was, I'm a survivor, man, just, just sacrificing and doing whatever I got to do. So, uh, I made it through. Um, so, um, the, you know, college ball there was fun. Had great coaches, great coaching staff. Uh, I love, I love my teammates. Um, but you know, I, it was a lot of sacrifice and a lot of things I, I was willing to sacrifice and a lot of guys wasn't, um, like I, I, it was a point of time in my career. Like I remember like it was yesterday, like my end of my junior year when I began to realize that a lot of guys are walking across this stage and they're going back home. And I'm seeing the reality of it. I'm like, yo, if I don't take care of my business, that's going to be me. But it's just like, nah, I can't do myself like that. So I began to make specific sacrifices. Like, for instance, one was Friday night with the bros. It got to a point where that wasn't important to me no more. You know, a lot of guys, they come hang out. I'm like, Friday night with the bros is not important to me. I'm thinking five years from now because that's going to come. So what I do right now is going to dictate what I'm going to be doing five years from now. You see what I'm saying? Or the type of mentality I have if adversity shows up or if this situation shows up, how I'm going to be able to handle it. You see what I'm saying? By the way, I prepare myself right now. It's just that my mind was just on a whole other scale, even at a young age. That's why I was able to always overcome and, and go that extra mile, you know, per se, if you will. <laughs> so 2012, you end up go, going into the draft but undrafted. Mm -hmm. um, you're signed by the Chicago Bears. Yeah. Um, and you get a taste for the first time of the business side of football right away. You get signed, then cut, then signed to the practice squad, um, and eventually the active roster where you played on special teams for parts of two seasons, like we said earlier. Right. Um, you know, and that must have been a shock to the system, especially coming from a not a not that glitzy D one school. Right. Um, you know, is the business of football similar to what you expected or what you were always told, or is it impossible to prepare for being a professional athlete? I mean, I'm the type of guy you just can't get rid of me. You know, uh, I know what I want, and uh, you, you you can't stop a man that won't quit. I know you hear it all the time, um, but I but I'm that guy that that you know when you tell him no, I come back tomorrow. If you tell me no tomorrow, I come back the next day, and to a point where you make a decision to where hey let's 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 check him out, and that that like I said I've always been that way, and it's nothing's been for publicity, but at the end of the day, um, it's it's my life, it's my legacy. Um, how do you want it to turn out? You know, and like successful people um, that gamble on the stocks and trades and, you know, all these different investments, they take risk. And that's the only way you can win. So, you know, for example, like even coming out of college, you talk about the league, even coming out of college, it's just about putting yourself in position, right? Uh, we had pro day. Um, my pro day was at 3.30. But U of H's pro day was at 7 o'clock in the morning, well, 8.30 in the morning. Guess where I was at 7 o'clock in the morning? I was at U of H. You said, Joe, why were you at U of H? It's just like I like to remain ahead of the game. I'm like, you got this powerhouse co collegiate football school across the street. I'm at the small school, Texas Southern. Ain't that many scouts going to be there. So it's like I know my film. I trust my film. I know I can play. You know, I know I'm going to put up the right numbers. But it's just like putting myself in position. You know, I'm always willing to go that extra mile. So I woke up early in the morning. I had my DVDs, my my, uh, my highlights and game film, um, all my, my stats, all that. And I showed up at, at U of H. Uh, pro day and uh, I looked at like one of their athletes a lot of a lot of scouts were, were looking at me up and down this and that and I was giving them politely my information and one scout I remember like it was yesterday it was from the Raiders he said uh I, 
you smart, man. He said, uh, I said, what you mean? He said, man, you smart. I've been watching you, man. And there's something about you. He said, man, you, you keep doing what you're doing, man. You're going you're gonna to be all right in this business. I said, coach, I just want it. You know, and I know ain't nobody going to give it to me. Sometimes you're going to have to go out there and take it. And that's just my mentality. I don't wait for nothing to fall in my lap. I don't wait for nobody to knock on my door and say, here, you know, I know my agent has a job to do, but while he's working, I still can be doing something too. A lot of guys just wait on it. And it's like I've never been in a position to where what I'm waiting for is just going to come, right? Because like I said, I'm from Texarkana. Nobody just brings you anything. You either go and take it or you ain't going to have it. So when I made it to Chicago <clears> – <throat> Crazy thing about Chicago, they call they called me on a standpoint of, hey, this is Isaiah. Um, we want to congratulate you first of all. I was like, thank you, man, thank you. He said, uh, we're gonna give you a tryout. We'll give you a three day tryout, and uh, we already got your plane ticket to go back to the house. So I'm like, I'm like you ain't even see like you ain't even seen me yet. You already got my ticket to go home. Like you you gonna write me off like that before I even get there, and He's like, uh, yeah, I'm just just letting you know the protocol. I said, well, sir, no disrespect to you, but I'm, I, I believe that uh, when I get off this phone, I'm going to pack for six months and not three days. He said, well, I understand that. It's just protocols. Letting like, you know, we're giving you a three-day tryout, and, you know, we already got your ticket to go back home. I said, but I ain't coming back home. But I will gladly see you when I get there. So I got there, boom, got off the phone. I got there. It was a three-day tryout. You had 90 other tryout guys, and they only kept three. I was one of them. Um, you had seven free agents, receivers, that the head coach, Lovey Smith, he was so in love with, right? Like, I got my guys. You know those coaches. I got my guys. I got my guys. And, you know, they drafted my guy, Alshon, in the second round. No disrespect to my boy. I love him. But uh, had he not been drafted, he would have been out of a job, too. Uh, <laughs> but it's crazy. Long story short, I got there and I built a name for myself. I went from a tryout guy uh, to practice squad, from practice squad to special teams from special teams to the fifth receiver and from the fifth receiver to the third receiver, right? And when I began to make a name for myself, one of the coaches, my receiver coach, came to me and he said, uh, I'm proud of you. And I asked, I said, I said, well, why you say that? He said, man, because you just don't know um, what what had to take place just to get you here. Um, guys really, really fought for you just to get you here, man. I remember like it was yesterday, your film landed on my table. I don't even know how it got there. Um, but I was curious because, like, why would this be on my table? And I knew everybody. We already had the draft board. We already had the board was full. The team was full. And he said, but God just placed something on my heart to look at this tape. And when I popped it in, it was something about you from the moment that I popped that tape in. And I immediately had to go to Lovey and say, hey, we got to bring this guy in. And when I told him that, Lovey was like, when I told him that, um, Lovey was like, I already got my guys. We're full. I got seven free agents I'm comfortable with, blah, blah, blah. And uh, Daryl Drake was like, hey, but these guys don't have what he got. He just need a chance. And, you know, he begged him. And Lovey was like, all right, we'll give him a shot. And brought him in, brought me in, and uh, took advantage of the opportunity. And all the seven free agent guys that he was so in love with, I beat them all out. Um, so so over, yeah. over time, you 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 proved that you belong on an NFL field. You had Absolutely. a few preseason receiving TDs uh, to your name while mm-hmm. you were in Chicago. Go look them up on YouTube. I did. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and then you played a lot of your time on special teams. We'll get to that in a second. But what does it feel? What does that feel like to get suited up and walk on an NFL field? Man, it's everything. I mean, you know, it's no different. But it's no different than college ball to me because football is football. Like me personally, I do all the work that I do the hard part outside of the game. So by the time I get to the game, I'm just really having fun. But the atmosphere, it didn't really hit me until uh, my second year in the league when we were playing uh, the Detroit Lions. And I came out in pregame, and I was just sitting there. And I was just looking. You had two TDs and, in that game. Uh, yeah. And I was just looking, and I was like, man, like, I made it. You know, like, you know, I made it, man. And, you know, I said, I just got to keep pressing from here on out. Like, here's a guy that comes from, a, you know, not having too much. Um, not to say I had the worst lifestyle at all. My mom and dad worked dang hard for me and my brother. But, you know, we you know, we grew up in a trailer park environment. Um, like I said, that was my mansion at that moment. You know, we had a roof over our head. And, uh, you know, it's from being coming from that to being able to come out of Texarkana, Redwater, Texas, and, and be at a, um, a billion-dollar business, you know, corporation, it's just like, wow, you know, not not too many cats can say that coming out of school like that. So uh, it was a blessing for me more so than anything. 
we've seen in the spring league meetings and coming into Austin for a second that coaches preach and coaches preach that special teams is the way on an NFL roster. Mm-hmm. You've seen that firsthand. Uh, what kind of preparation do you put into that aspect of the game, if anything different, in addition to developing your skills as a receiver? I think more so than anything, like special special teams, man, that ain't nothing but effort. Like, like you know, you can coach guys and tell them, hey, you know, if you want to make the team, da 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 da. Man, special teams is nothing but effort. That's how I made the team. You know, I, I, I was just so grateful of the opportunity to where you know whatever I got to do to feed my family on such a great scale financially, I'm going to do it. You know, because I could be flipping burgers at Burger King. I could be, you know, trying to get, pick up the janitor job just to save a few dollars or try to open up this shop or that shop. But it's like, no, I am here in an arena where a lot of guys don't get an opportunity. That's what makes me so upset when I see a lot of guys take it for granted. Because it's like, man, there's people out here dealing with way worse. And here you are with a great opportunity, you know. And then you got certain guys that hold out for money reasons. You know, and I get it. You know what I'm saying? But, like, it's like you could have nothing. You know what I mean? So I think special teams is like – you just got to have a passion for what you do. You know, if you got a name on the back of your jersey, whatever it is you're doing out there, you know, it's just like you want to represent that name on the back of your jersey first, and then you represent the name on the front because they're keeping you a job, right? So, you know, um, just taking advantage of the opportunity, man, because not a lot of people get it. So whether it's special teams, receiver, I think, at, you know, when you come in with the mindset of dominating special teams, if you do play linebacker, if you do, uh, you know, play wide receiver or DB, how you dominate here on special teams just by you being around. If a DB go down or a linebacker go down, now that's your moment, and you can eventually turn into the number one linebacker where you ain't got to play special teams no more. It's just like putting yourself in position, just playing the game. you got to be go. on the team to get to number yeah, one on the depth play, chart. Yeah, but if you want to try to trick it off and say, oh, I'm not no special team, and now you're at the house wishing like, yo, I, I play special teams, I'll do this, I'll do that. It's just like do it then, you know. So back to so now to the meat of this story, where, where maybe some people know you from. But after you let go by the Bears, you did spend some time with the Eagles. Um, but for better or for worse, you're probably best known for your non-traditional way of getting a look uh, back from an NFL team after you were let go from Philly. Um, so a lot of people may remember this story, but you stood outside NRG Stadium in Houston with a sign that said, uh, not homeless but starving for success, we'll run roots for food. Um, you know, we talk about that well, let's talk about that for a moment. Talk to me about what went into that decision and the corresponding coverage you got afterwards. Well, first of all, I went. I wouldn't call. You know, I wasn't looking for coverage. Let's just say that um, people that know me personally know that that's seeing that guy standing outside of saying that's just who I am. Again, I just mentioned to you coming out of. Co- I just see things. Di- I don't wait on nothing to come to me. I just don't. Um, you know, like I said, our pro day was at three de- three o'clock, but U of H was at eight thirty. Why am I at U of H? It's no different than standing outside of a stadium, trying to create an opportunity for myself, whatever I have to do to put myself in position. I am going to do that regardless of what that person says or that person says. So when God gave me the idea to stand outside of the stadium, and I got to I gotta give uh, uh, honor to my wife, too, because she's a big part of that. She's the one that wrote on the sign. So without my wife, you wouldn't have such an amazing uh, statement on the sign. I held it, but she wrote on it. We're one. We're a team. So um, I stood outside that stadium because it's like, yo, um, I'm trying to feed my family. And I know where I'm gifted at. Yeah, there's other things that God is going to use me to do. I have other visions. I have other goals. But this is something that's on my vision board. And because they're not giving it to me, they're not giving me the opportunity that I know that, that I'll take advantage of. I'll create my own. You know, and, and, you know, most of the time, you know, you got guys in this life that, that, that have great ideas that they're, they can act on, but they don't. And by the time they're 49, 52, 53, they look back on it and say, what if I would have did that? But see, I'm the type of guy, if it, if it pops up, whether I win or lose, whether it happens or it don't, I'm going to take a chance. I'm going to take a chance. So, you know, what you seen was a man that know exactly what he want, and it's not taking no for an answer. You know, you hear people say whatever it takes, you know, anything's possible, but rarely do you see people act on it. So it's easy to give kids evidence of whatever it takes. If I go to a high school and I speak to kids and tell them that anything's possible, keep going, never give up, when they look up and see this guy that lived it. You see what I'm saying? Whatever it takes could lead you outside of a stadium. That's whatever it takes. You know, you get somebody to just put good words together and talk about it. But who's really living it? It's only a handful of people that genuinely is after something. You know, for whatever reason, 
Um, but mine is just, you know, it's just part of my purpose. You know, it, it creates change in many people's life outside of ball. Um, I'm, I'm able to touch people's life that don't even play ball or care nothing about it. It just gave a lot of people hope to live again, not give up, you know, and just keep pressing, you know, because if it's for you, it's for you, regardless of how you had to get to it. Like Inky Johnson, he said, man, you know, I, I showed up at Oprah Winfrey's uh, office. I just took a trip on my last dime uh, to, to, to fly out to wherever she was and just to try to get her my book. Most people would think that's crazy. How are you going to take a blank trip, fly out to this woman's office? But it, but it, it got him, it got him an opportunity. So it was just like, hey, if this is gonna feed my family, hey, you know, I'm, I'm ready. You know, this ain't a publicity stunt because if they would have asked me to lace it up right then and there, I would have been ready. So, so you know. in in response to 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 the sign display, one of your ex teammates, Brandon Marshall, uh, receiver who's now with the New York Giants, he wrote on Instagram, "This is humility right here." My brother Joe Anderson is one of the hardest working guys I've had the pleasure of playing with. Uh, what is it that you think you did, you know, directly with him while you were on the Bears with him together when you shared a locker room with him, um, with a player of Brandon's caliber to, to leave that kind of impression on someone who's likely nearing the end of a Hall of Fame career? Produce. Produce. It's not all talk. You know, some people talk about it and say they can do this, say they'll do that. But when you're productive, you've been productive and, and you really got juice in the tank, people can't deny what's real. You know, uh, Brandon's a good friend of mine and, and he just he's just speaking facts. And I was grateful that he was a brother enough to me to, you know, go to the office and say, hey, here's a guy that this is not a Joe Blow. He just needs a shot. I played with him. I know what he can do. And he'll outwork anybody that you've been bringing in and out of here. And, uh, you know, when you got people to go to bat for you like that, because no, let me tell you something. There's not one successful person can raise their hand and say, I did it all by myself. You know, even Brian Woods, the owner of this spring league, he can't say that. You know, so to have somebody in your corner, you know, to, to, to vouch for you or, you know, send an elevator back down because they're already up, it's like a breath of fresh air, you know, because you know you still got genuine people out here that actually aren't just thinking about themselves. You know, it's not just about me, but to see that, okay, my, my brother got everything that it takes. He, he just needs somebody to speak up for him. You know what I mean? Because sometimes that's all it takes. You know, you know, this league is based off relationship, who you know. Um, you know, if, 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 like, if my dad, if my dad, quote unquote, was Trump, how hard would it be for me to, uh, start having real estate? You know, and I'm, just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna know. steer that conversation back, <laughs> back away, because who knows who's listening, but, yeah, right, right, um, right. back to the spring league, you know, <laughs> uh, at 29, That's you're funny. on, you're on the older end, uh, other range of guys competing in the spring league. Uh, what, what is it inside you that keeps that football dream alive when you're surrounded by much younger competition? It don't matter. Age doesn't matter. It, don't, it just don't matter. It don't. I, I, I know a lot of a lot of uh, men and women that's twenty nine, freaking married to forty year old people. You guys, it's crazy. Like yo, you you too old, you know. But I mean, it just, it just don't matter. I know that doesn't make sense, but it really just doesn't matter. You know, I have something in me like God has anointed me to play this game. Um, I'm not just like I'm not your average twenty nine year old, and that's not the down the next twenty nine year old or anything like that. But like I, me, <laughs> you know, what I got in me is something special, and that's the thing you got to figure that out about yourself. And I know what's in me is special. You know, Steve Harvey, he he was twenty nine when he started comedy. People thought he was old, <laughs> but now look at him. You know, he took a chance. So it's just like, hey, you know, if you know something's for you, uh, don't hang it up till you feel like it's just not for you. You know, and I'm not hanging anything up until I'm done with it. You know, so. Uh, just keep it in line with unconventional ways of getting noticed. You actually reached out to the Spring League through Instagram mm -hmm. and ended up getting accepted. Absolutely. Um, how did you find out about the Spring League initially and, and what attracted you to it? It was like a week and a half before report date, and I was training, and uh, one of my friends had mentioned it to me while we were training. I was like, dude, I don't know what that is. And uh, my agent had hit me up and told me about it. And uh, once he gave me different, more details, I was like, Let's do it. Like, let's do it. Like, hey, this is an opportunity. Like, you know, um, what are the odds? So, you know, the opportunity presented itself. You know, we took care of all the financial things that we had to take care of for the, for the spring league. And uh, um, my receiver coach from Chicago, he called Brian. I reached out to y'all just to get a little bit more information. Like, oh, who do I need to talk to? And um, you guys hit me back. Um, but my, my receiver coach from the Bears, Andrew Hay Stoker, he um, – called Brian and had a conversation with him. And, uh, you know, Brian, you know, I'm sure he talks to millions of people a day, but he told my coach, he was like, yeah, I know exactly who he is. Um, you know, tell him, tell him, come. We, we, I'll take care of him. I'll make sure he's good. 
So uh, <laughs> uh, it was time to report on Wednesday, and I uh, I packed it up, and I headed out here to Austin, and uh, here I am. You designed this for guys like myself, for opportunity to show that you still can play, um, give an opportunity to go to the next level, because that's, that's the ultimate goal, to get back to the business. You know, it's not to come here and trick off time and play, say I play for the sprint, like, nah, like I'm after something. So him giving me the opportunity – like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to play with it. So um, he gave me the opportunity, and now I'm here. First couple of days, I was out there with a blank jersey, no number on it. But you know, I cherish that blank jersey. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna frame that blank jersey. You know what I mean? Because it's gonna go a long way. I just Brian might ask for that jersey back. I hope you don't. Hey. <laughs> I think I hope everyone you know. gives their jersey back at the end. I'm gonna try to buy that one from him, man. Um. So lastly, I mean, that story about coming to Austin. It, it doesn't exactly resemble your story with the bears, but it's a lot of, yeah. you know, back and forth to, to start yeah. this next chapter. Um, yeah. And then one more thing, you actually began the spring league as a member of, of team South, yeah. um, but with a stacked receiving core there, you found yourself in the rare spring league transaction. Um, and you're now uh, repping team West team West needed some Texas on it. Yeah. Um, tell us about the team you're going into battle with. Man, them my boys now. I just say it like that. Them my boys, man, we're going to run, we're going to run this whole league the West. I'm going to just say it like that. You know, I know you got Johnny Menzel and his team. I was on it. But, uh, you know, they were stacked. Like I said, when I first got here, he was just trying to fit me in because every every team was stacked. It was. I seen that when I got out there. There's so many guys all over the place. And uh, it just so happened that I think a few guys, um, you know, were absent for whatever reason. Um, and they were, they were low at receiver. And they think that the guys weren't going to make it back. And, uh, you know, a few Knicks guys were nicked up. And he placed me on the South, you know, being that I'm out there in the South in Houston. He's like, it was just a perfect situation to be in. And, you know, me and Johnny and those guys, we got the clicking. And uh, now I'm thinking that I'm on the South and we about to tear it up. Then the next day or later on that day, he was just like, hey, um, I'm going to put you on the West. I'm like, man, I just got camaraderie with my guys. And uh, so now I got to build camaraderie with my West guys, but I've already done that. So hopefully tomorrow he don't be like, you're on the East. So, you know, but I came in without nobody, you know, without no team. So just to be out there running around with the opportunity, that's all that matters, whether you're on the West, South, East, North, that shouldn't even matter. Guys shouldn't even be focused on that. It's just about putting up film, uh, taking care of business, and just owning the moment. You know, that's what it's all about right now. So I'm grateful to be on the West right now and dealing with Austin and Matt and all those guys and receiving passes from those guys. So, well, so it'll be you and uh, and Zach Mettenberg are the two yeah. Southern boys playing for the West. Yeah, um, yeah. and uh, you'll be taking the field on Saturday. Yeah, first time in pads since when? Man, I ain't, I ain't mm-hmm. played a game. I ain't played a game since 2013. But I've been in pads 2016 when I was with the when I was with the Jets. So uh, you know, uh, but I've been I've been training in, in pads. I've been training in weight vests with pads on. So it's like it's really light. The equipment is really light to me right now. Um, but just having the, the opportunity to run around again with my helmet on, um, doing what I love. You know, actually putting it into play, clacking with guys, putting that putting that right air on, on where it belongs. You know, on the other side of the ball on the boys. So uh, you know, I'm, I'm I'm excited, man. Saturday, like talk about a game. <sighs> Is you know this is like that plate of food on the table. Who gonna eat? You know, so we're gonna we're gonna find out a lot about uh, who who's who come Saturday. Um, but my my main focus is just ha- having fun. Like seriously, I think today when we were on the knee, um, I really cherished that moment when we brought it up after practice. It made me feel like high school again. You know, when you're listening to your coach talk and you're not really realizing what's taking place, but you're given an opportunity. That a lot of people don't get, man. So it's just like I'm like, yeah, it's a spring league, but it don't feel like it, you know. It just don't. So um, man, I, I'm really excited about Saturday. Um, a lot, a lot of my followers and fans are going to tune in. Um, it's just a special moment because this is a part of a journey that's getting ready to get ready to go to the next chapter, and that's an exciting thing for my fan base, my family, my friends, um, and, and, and my legacy that I'm getting ready to leave. So yeah, we'll we'll put the little ticket link in uh, in the description for the the podcast. You can stream it uh, for free live on on Bleacher Report Live, which just launched, and uh, we hope to have a lot of Joe Anderson fans out there. Absolutely, appreciate Absolutely. it, man. Absolutely, thank you, thank you for having me. Man. That brings us to the end of our latest episode from Austin. Thank you to Joe for sharing his story, passion, and drive with us. 
Once again, for those who will be in the Austin area this weekend, tickets are available at the link in the description of this podcast. For those that aren't, all Spring League games will stream for free on BR Live, Bleacher Report's brand new live sports streaming platform. You can find the Spring League on social media at the Spring League. You can find me on Twitter at AG Stick and on Instagram at This Is My Other IG. All music was provided to Spring Forward by Joshua Rosner. We'll be back with another episode shortly. Later. Later.